Hi, it's Kirby Summers, and I want to welcome you to the Epstein Project podcast. Today, I'm going to be uh, discussing uh, new information on Ghislaine Maxwell, what's going on, bring you up to date. And if we have time, uh, I'd like to briefly discuss the Epstein Project uh, newsletter that I sent out to everyone on my list on March uh, 11th, which would have been yesterday. Um, We'll get to that shortly if there's time. Uh, Before I start, I want to uh, once again thank all of you for uh, becoming part of this journey that we're on. It seems that we're out to slay the dragons uh, who have harmed um, innocent children and women and at this point, we've expanded. You know, a lot of us have outed our own abusers. Uh, we've discussed other trafficking um, rings, which I think the consensus at this point is that they're interconnected and uh, that they uh, are connected to the top. And the top literally means the intelligence agencies. So um, I want to thank you for, uh, again, being uh, incredible followers and for your support, you know, buying my books, uh, becoming members in my Epstein Project newsletter, and um, becoming patrons on my Patreon. Which, by the way, I I just want to say before, again, before I get started here, that um, I realized, and I had realized early on, but I realize it more now, that everything that I have, my Twitter account, my Patreon, uh, my books have all been sort of infiltrated by the enemy, meaning that the accounts that I keep, that I've been harping on saying, hey, you know, we're being... um, we have trolls or we have misinformation agents or we have paid accounts and paid accounts, meaning accounts hired by reputation defender companies. Well, all of that has proven to be true. Um, We have uh, seen and read how Prince Andrew's public relations company went and spoke with a person turned enemy of Virginia uh, and so that sort of made some of you who were sitting on the fence turn around and say, oh, okay, this does happen, and it's happening more and more. Uh, recently, we have seen the arrival of Ghislaine Maxwell's uh, siblings who created a Twitter account because the people they hired to be their, quote, reputation defenders, public relations people, uh, they, they, you know, they weren't getting a pass from all of us. Our voices are very loud and in support of the victims of Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. And so the siblings have decided, hey, we're going to set up our own Twitter account. Yeah, well, they're not doing very well. <laughs> all right. Um, so now that I've thanked you and the whole thing, I want to start with a complaint that I hear uh, every now and then, and that is that uh, to date, there has been no mugshot of Ghislaine Maxwell. And for some reason, some of you feel that it's nefarious and it means that she's not in jail. Okay, let's put that to rest. In 2016, there was a new law passed, um, sort of making public access to mugshots of people arrested on federal criminal charges to sort of just not be um, made available on a database for you to find. I know that the law had not been like that when Jeffrey Epstein was arrested. Therefore, we were able to see his mugshots. But the law did change in 2016. If you just do a simple search... Uh, For a mugshot um, law 2016, you will find that um, they just stopped because they called the mugshots uh, embarrassing and humiliating information and damaging to a person's reputation. 
And so they decided that with anyone who was high profile, as is the case with Ghislaine Maxwell, that, well, that's not going to be information that we're going to be able to find. So it doesn't mean that she's not in jail. Uh, One of the three victims who is involved in the current case against Ghislaine Maxwell is Annie Farmer. And Annie Farmer saw her. She knew she was in court. She she visually saw her. So we have confirmation uh, of a sighting of Ghislaine Maxwell in jail uh, when her first bail hearing happened. I believe it was on July 14th. Okay, so now that we've gotten that straightened out, and uh, I hope that works for you, um, I want to say that... Uh, you know, I put together a petition uh, written to uh, Judge uh, Judith Nathan, who is the judge on the case, United States of America versus Ghislaine Maxwell. Um, many of you have signed. I think we're up to almost, what, a 20, 2,500 signatures at this point. And I initially only wanted 1,000, but please keep signing it. So the letter that I sent to uh, Judge Nathan on our behalf, I want to read that to you because it's a, it's 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 a cover letter. I included forty three or forty four pages. It's a PDF file of everyone who had signed up to that point. Uh, I know that the Maxwell family has also had letters written on behalf of Ghislaine saying what a wonderful person she is to please, you know, accept that she's a wonderful person and grant her a uh, bail and let her go home or somewhere. And she, she will r- respond and be able to work better with her attorney, so on and so forth. So they've been writing letters to the judge and to the court requesting that Ghislaine Maxwell be granted bail. And this is her third request. Our letter, I think, I mean, with thousands of people uh, who have signed this, I think our numbers um, are are greater, frankly. The public is greater than the friends of Ghislaine Maxwell, the family of Ghislaine Maxwell. And ultimately, the judge has to do what's in best interest for the court. So the prosecution um, stepped in and sent a very nice and very long letter to the judge opposing Ghislaine's third request. And they were very methodical with this is the reason, this is the reason, this is the reason. And the fact that Ghislaine offered to give up her citizenship uh, to the UK as well as the one to to France, uh, you know, they were very thorough in their research. They came back and said, hey, you know, that's a time-consuming process. And it takes, it doesn't mean that she can uh, sort of like escape there. Because let's say in the instance of the, um, her citizenship in France, well, the way the law works is that Even if she were to renounce that citizenship today, the crimes that she has been accused of happened at an earlier time. So she is still legally protected uh, in France for that time period. So that it renders the whole uh, question of her giving up her citizen, it it makes no sense. it, It doesn't change anything. And then as far as her citizenship saying she'll denounce it in in England, the process in England is so lengthy that it could take years, years uh, before that can be sorted out. So that this offer that she has, she meaning Ghislaine Maxwell and her attorneys, her very expensive attorneys, by the way, have offered really means nothing. It's just they keep adding stuff to it, hoping somehow that she can be released on bail. And I know that we all feel, I feel, you feel, that she's going to run. So 
I'm going to read this letter that we sent to the judge. It says, uh, Dear Judge Nathan, on February 23rd, 2021, Defendant Ghislaine Maxwell filed a third motion for release on bail. We write on behalf of the victims of Ghislaine Maxwell to respectfully request the court deny bail as Ms. Maxwell continues to pose a serious flight risk. Ms. Maxwell has the financial means via money in overseas banks, as is evidenced by how Jeffrey Epstein transferred money into offshore accounts, as well as having the ability via her powerful contacts, heads of state, to enter into another country with or without a passport. Ghislaine Maxwell is known among her victims as someone who terrorized them for years with threats of violence, and even now, through intermediaries, these continue. We cannot emphasize enough the danger Miss Maxwell poses, not only to the three victims who stand before her in this case, but to hundreds, perhaps thousands of others who have suffered physical and emotional distress caused by Miss Maxwell's action. Our open letter... Uh, with additional information on how easy it would be for Maxwell to flee the United States can be read here. And I inserted a link to the open letter that I've shared with everyone and that I think you're familiar with. And then I go on to close. Uh, Based on the above, we urged the court deny bail for the third time in the matter of Ghislaine Maxwell respectfully submitted the supporters of the victims of Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. Um, so uh, there's that letter for you. Um, so I've already discussed the mugshot, the letter. I want to remind you that Ghislaine did not think she was going to be like arrested. Or maybe she thought she was going to be arrested, but she took steps to um, hide. One of those is um, that when she was discovered living in Manchester by the sea with her new husband, uh, Scott Borgerson, she then ran off and purchased a million dollar house in New Hampshire, uh, where she was equipped with like two um, military trained guards who ran and did errands for her. Uh, They had her credit card so that she did not go out. She was not seen in public. When the FBI finally came and they knocked on the door and that was around six o'clock in the morning on July the 2nd, of 2020, uh, Ghislaine did not just go to the door and answer it like a normal person would, you know, if somebody is saying, Hey, FBI, uh, no, she ran (laughs) into a bedroom, slamming the door and hiding. And that is when the police who accompanied the FBI, uh, broke into her home and arrested her. When they were inside her home, they discovered one of her cell phones, the phone that she had used previously because she then had a new one uh, that, you know, she did not think they were going to find her because possibly the new phone she had, maybe it wasn't in her name. I don't know the specifics of that, but she had her regular phone that she had used previously uh, wrapped in foil. Uh, and that is what you do when you don't want um, it to be picked up by the satellites that keep track of all our phones. Now, it goes to show you that, you know, Ghislaine's phone was off. You can't imagine that she would wrap it on because at some point that battery is going to give out. So she turned it to the off position, but she still wrapped it, which, which, again, goes to show you that the, um, that the FBI, that the intelligence agencies can track us anywhere, whether our phone is on or off, we're tracked. We're tracked via our computers. 
We're tracked via our phones. There's literally nothing we can do. We're tracked with the credit cards that we use. We're just tracked everywhere. There are cameras everywhere. I live in New York City and you can't walk one city block without having, you know, maybe, you know, six or seven cameras pointed in your face. Um, so in any event, she knows this, but she wrapped it in tin foil so that she can avoid detection. Um, one thing that she did, well, among the things that she did uh, in London after her father, Robert Maxwell, was either killed or committed suicide on November the 5th, 1991, when there was a big scandal and her brothers, Ian and Kevin Maxwell, were in the court because they were part of their father's business, as was Ghislaine, um, and they were accused of embezzlement, uh, and they stood trial, and I don't know how they got um, freed, uh, but they did, even though they, they knew or should have known, because they were the ones that were warning the father, hey, this bank called today. Hey, this bank called today. So they knew there was financial uh, concern, and yet they were in court, they were arrested, and they were allowed to just go on with their lives. I guess that's what the Maxwells feel entitled to, because the brothers and the sisters have put up this major fight. First, it was called Free Ghislaine. It, it, it's just, it's morphed. It's had several names. It was given to an attorney, then it was given to a public relations firm, and, you know, none of that really worked. And so they decided to contact the press themselves. They have had a couple of stories planted, and just, what, two or three days ago, uh, Ian Maxwell made a, <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh, it's just, that it's just so, um, it's 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 sort of like um a slap in the face to the victims for the brothers to say that um she is being treated terribly in jail and that it's unfair and she should be released um well frankly she's not being treated unfairly in jail she has been given the entire second floor to herself. She has her own private bathroom. She has phone access, her own phone access, whenever she wants to make a phone call. She is allowed out of her cell. I believe it's up to 13 hours a day. She has access to two computers and she has her own television. So I don't call this uh, an, a, a difficult jail time. Uh, I, 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 you know, other inmates are in crowded conditions, sharing uh, a communal bathroom that's filthy. Um, but Ghislaine Maxwell uh, is complaining about everything. They have filed motion after motion with the court. So her brother Ian uh, claims that jail time is akin to torture. Uh, and he has got gotten a lot of press. Of course, their friends are all connected to the media. And, you know, there's this nefarious connection to intelligence agencies and the media that you're all now familiar with. Well, no, the torture is really what Ghislaine Maxwell did to the minors and the women who were entrapped and enslaved and allegedly raped by Ghislaine Maxwell her friends, and the man that she partnered up with, Jeffrey Epstein. That's what torture is. Torture is not sitting in a jail, not being raped, you know, having a whole floor to yourself, watching TV when you want, you know, having your, your computers and having your own bathroom and having all of the perks that Ghislaine Maxwell has. Sorry, that is not um, torture. The end result... I think we all suspect is that she will flee. Whether she has a passport 
or not, the whole scope of the Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell child sex trafficking uh, ring was that they blackmailed heads of state internationally. They have dirt on everyone. When uh, Virginia Giuffray inquired uh, why is Bill Clinton here or something like that uh, when she was with Jeffrey Epstein, his comment to her was, he owes me favors. He owes me a favor. Okay, so that's what they call it. When you have dirt on someone and or you've done a favor for someone, like maybe not saying, hey, this person slept with two minors and I'm not going to say anything, but now you have to do something for me. That's called a favor. That's sort of the same language that's used by the mafia. Oh, yeah, yeah, a favor for a favor. You know, it's like, oh, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Um, so that, you know, I've lost my, my train of thought, but the favor uh, aspect of this is that if Ghislaine, oh, I've got my train back, <laughs> so that Ghislaine can literally just appear on the doorstep of any one of the um, heads of state the countries where they have blackmail information uh, on the leader or the relative of the leader and say, hey, you know, I'm here and you're going to hide me. And so she she has that and she also has access, obviously, to more money than, than has been stated. It's impossible to believe that there was not money put into offshore accounts. So, um, no, I think Ghislaine Maxwell, as you think, should be kept in prison. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be a, a court, um, a, a sort of like this trial by jury situation that we're all expecting in July. Um, and the reason for that is that this is a definite intelligence connected case. And and the people that have been implicated are presidents. In one instance, it's a prince, Prince Andrew. There are they, you know, there are very powerful people who whose names have been protected by the court, by judges, and don't forget a couple of the judges that sit. <laughs> in court are people who have been put there because of favors to, let's say, President Bush, favors to Clinton, favors to Reagan. This is not a new thing. We This is a multi-generational um, case where we have, there are people planted in various positions in the government that are going to do what is being asked of them by the agencies that are connected to this and, and by the power players that uh, Ghislaine Maxwell worked for. Because it's not like one day she woke up and said, oh, today I'm going to start raping and pimping kids. That didn't happen like that. Okay, so, um, you know, there was there, there's information that I want to give you that's kind of like new that no one has talked about. And I've put out little feelers here and there, but what happens with social media, I have discovered, and even with a podcast when you're trying to be very thorough, is that most people were now being uh, accustomed to sort of not having the ability to listen very well. We're now sort of being accustomed to not even reading our tweets and the tweets are, you know, pretty short. So many people don't even read the whole tweet. They read maybe the first couple of words and move on. So that the attention span that perhaps your parents had, my, my parents had, 
and frankly that I have because I'm older than a lot of you, is gone. Uh, is, our listening skills are not as good as they used to be so that our awareness skills, as, as woke as many of us uh, are, there's stuff that we still miss. So um, I, I just want to bring that to your attention because I have been talking every now and then I'll, I'll say something about George Clooney. So I, I am going to spice this up a little bit and I'm going to include the George Clooney information here uh, because I want to see if at the 25 minute mark, if any of you are still with me. So, um, Ghislaine Maxwell, uh, boasted, uh, back in, I believe it was 2000, 2001, that she was at a club and she cornered, uh, Clooney in a bathroom stall and, uh, gave him a BJ, uh, you know, I'm not, I guess you know what that means. And for some reason, I guess that was a big deal for her. So she ran around boasting about this to, um, Virginia who wrote about it in her memoir, which was submitted to the court as a supporting document when she was suing, uh, Ghislaine for defamation. So that's where that comes from. So, um, all right. So who is George Clooney? You know that he's an actor. He's the, he's the, uh, son of another well-known singer. But let me just go into a little bit of what films he has been connected with and, and what's he connected with now. Um, Many of you probably have heard of the movie Argo. It was uh, made a couple of years ago. It was about the CIA getting um, one of, like, you know, during the Iran hostage crises, trying to get some of their people out. And it was, um, it was a, a well-known movie that even I enjoyed. Um, well, Argo is was commissioned by the CIA, which they do uh, more than you and I would like to think, but they commissioned this movie. I think it was to celebrate the fact that they had been in existence for 50 years and they wanted something to... Um, make themselves look good. And so they commissioned this film, Argo. Well, who produced it? It was produced by Grant Heslov, uh, Ben Affleck, who uh, was in the film, and George Clooney. And so why is this important? Well, because there's another producer whose name is Arnon Milchin, who is a Mossad agent. He even said, I'm a Mossad agent. Arnon Milchin is the Hollywood producer of the film Pretty Woman. And he was an agent. Um, so that George Clooney, eh, you know what? I think he's an agent. Uh, just recently, or maybe not that recently, I would have to find the date. He became a member of the Council of Foreign Affairs. And um, that's that mysterious organization that typically has a lot of intelligence agents in it. And it's something that um, Jeffrey Epstein was also a member of. So, uh, I mean, there's more on, on George Clooney. Uh, I will let you figure it out. Um, so, you know, it's already, we're at the 30 minute mark. So I want to, um, I'm going to be closing here, but please like the video. All right. Leave your questions and comments. I'd love to hear what you think about 
Ghislaine Maxwell's approach to trying to get bail and, you know, whether or not you think she's going to flee the country. I think she's not going to be a granted bail, but you never know. We really don't know what's going to happen, but we'll know in the next day or two. And then, you know, if you have any interesting information on George Clooney that you want to share, feel free to leave that in the comments. Okay, well, thank you for listening to the Epstein Project podcast, and um, we will do this again. Thanks. Bye.